Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be applying dimensional analysis to chemistry, and specifically, we'll be solving what's known as mole problems, okay? They're kind of famous problems in chemistry involving a new unit we're going to learn about called the mole. Okay, so what is the mole? The mole is actually uh, a unit of measurement similar to a dozen. Like where a dozen is 12 of something, one mole happens to be this fantastically large number. 6.02 times 10 to 23rd, and it's Emilio Avogadro. He's the guy who came up with this and takes all the credit for the mole. Handsome looking guy there, isn't he? And basically it's a unit, but really what it says is that if I have a mole of something, I have that many of anything okay you can have that many dollars that many footballs that many pizzas you name it you got it in chemistry we specifically say 6.02 times 10 to 23rd but we usually talk about something like atoms we often mention molecules or also if i reference ionic compounds formula units So these are the general three things we'll be discussing uh, 6.02 times 10 to 23rd in reference to. Now, just like a dozen of anything will occupy a, a certain amount of space, the same thing with a mole, a mole of anything does have a mass. Okay, If I have that much of a quantity of something, that large number, it's going to have a mass. I, I, can, I can find out how much mass it has in chemistry lab by putting it on a scale. I can also find out how much space that uh, that amount of mass will occupy. And lastly, and the most famous, is that simply a mole of anything is a number. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd or something. So that amount, that quantity, will take up a certain space, also known as volume, and that certain amount or quantity will also have a certain mass that goes along with it. Okay, we'll start off with the atom called carbon. All right, one mole of carbon. All right, one mole of carbon implies that I have this many, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, atoms of carbon and one mole of carbon. Now, that many atoms of carbon will have a mass, and they will weigh 12.01 grams of carbon. Now, that many atoms will have that mass. And if it happened to be in the gas phase, my one mole of carbon would also occupy 22.4 liters of space. Now, as I change my element, I want you to notice one thing here. I'm going to go back. Let's go back to carbon. All right. See what changes here. You'll notice there's only one thing changing. I'm going to kind of have it highlighted. As I go to helium, look at the, uh, the mass here, the mass. And I'm going to phase back now. Carbon has 12 grams per one mole of carbon. Helium has 4 grams. But you'll notice over here, this stays the same, the number of atoms, and likewise, the amount of volume of it. So one mole of helium is 6.02 times 10 to 23rd atoms of helium. One mole of helium will have a mass of 4 grams, and also one mole of helium will occupy 22.4 liters of space. And specifically, guys, we say that this should be at STP, and I'll get to this in a later class, that's standard temperature and pressure. So we'll be talking about that down the road. But right now, just know that one mole of a substance is 22.4 liters of that substance if it's a gas. All right, so we check out neon here, all right? If we look at neon, one mole of neon is going to have how many atoms? Okay, every single time I see one mole, it's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. One mole of neon, if it happens to be a gas, will occupy 22.4 liters of that gas at STP, which is standard temperature and pressure. And one mole of neon, this is where we're going to have to check our periodic table. And lastly, one mole of neon will have a mass of 20.2 grams. Now that number I actually take from the periodic table. It's the atomic mass that is on the periodic table, and that is the number that I'm referencing here. So every, every time I reference this number, the grams, I need to consult my periodic table, look at the atomic mass that is on the periodic table. Now as we go to the next element here, which is oxygen, and oxygen in this case is O2, um, I want you to see, once again, 
there's a couple things that stay the same. The number of atoms, the liters of the gas, those are the things that stay the same. One thing I have changed is this, okay? O2 is a molecule, okay? O2. Oxygen is made up of two individual atoms. So this guy over here is an atom, and this guy over here is an atom, and all together they come together and form a molecule. So I'm going to call O2 a molecule, not an atom. So one mole of O2 has 6.02 times 10 to 23rd molecules of O2 or of oxygen. That many molecules will also occupy this volume of space, as we said before last time. And over here, this is a little tricky part here, okay? Uh, a lot of students will get this confused, especially on the first shot. What is the mass of one mole of O2? And you consult your periodic table, and on your periodic table, you see that oxygen has a weight of roughly, you know, excuse me, 16, 16 grams. All right? But that's awesome if we're dealing with just oxygen by itself, or I should say O1. But check this out here. We have two oxygens. That's O2. So really what we're dealing with is 16 plus another 16 to give us 32 grams. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Be very mindful of that. The only thing you're going to double here, O2, you're doubling the mass. You're not doubling the 22.4. You're not doubling the 6.02. That's not the point. I'm just doubling the mass of oxygen here because it's O2. Okay, once we go to uh, NaCl, NaCl is uh, not an atom. NaCl is made of uh, one sodium atom and one chlorine atom. So we can't call it 6.02 times 10 to 23rd atoms, and it's not a molecule because molecules are covalent compounds. We need to call this a formula unit. Okay, and so we're going to have 6.02 times 10 to 23rd formula units, or also known as FUs. Um, I have one mole of NaCl if I happen to vaporize it into a gas. It would be 22.4 liters of that gas at standard temperature and pressure. That won't happen, but if I did, that's what it would be. And lastly, one mole of NaCl is going to is going to have a weight of Na plus the weight of Cl. Na is going to weigh roughly 23, and Cl is going to weigh roughly 35.45 grams. So NaCl altogether is the combined weight of 23 plus 35.45, and that's going to give us roughly 58.5 grams in one mole of NaCl. And here's just a little bit of a fun fact. You guys are chock full of atoms, and the atoms you're filled with are mostly oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. And just bear in mind, a lot of you is good old H2O, so it's no surprise that C and um, H and O are in here. But 99% of you come from those three elements. And just a little rough, you know, calculation, you have roughly this many atoms in your body, okay? 7 times 10 to 27th atoms, okay? Therefore, how many moles is that? Well, it's roughly 11,000 600 or so moles of atoms in your body. So you guys are filled with atoms, not just cells. You got a lot of cells inside your body. That's great. You have tons of atoms inside of you. So you got roughly 11,000 moles. All right, just a little bit of fun fact here. We're going to start getting into some examples now. And